Dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, in today's liturgy we get inspiration from the Gospel of Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Are you lost? Finding the lost is Jesus' mission. It's our mission. The whole mission of Jesus Christ is coming here on earth, dear friends, is to reveal the love of the Father, the mercy of the Father, the care, the providence of the Father, who the Father is before us, his children. And his mission was shown when he accepted to go through everything, the humiliations, the suffering, even the death, so that we can be saved and have life and can return to the Father so that we can be happy as children. So Jesus' mission to look for the lost, those sinners who are away from God and from each other, is our mission to see that we help each other to return to whatever is good, to return to God, to return to others, and to return to ourselves. Now, dear friends, we hear of today two categories of people, the scribes and Pharisees who think that they know much about religion and the tradition and they think that they are doing good and they are living a good life and they are despising others. On one side, the scribes and Pharisees who are looking down on others and always ready to point others and they think they are good, too good, and others are bad on one side, and on the other hand, we see the tax collectors and sinners who are running to Jesus. They saw how good he is, how kind he has been, how merciful he is, how he has been healing, and they are running to him, seeking for mercy, seeking to be touched. Maybe I am also one of them, looking and searching and running to the Lord, seeking to be touched. Do I open my heart so that Jesus can touch me and I pour out whatever is in my heart? Do I look for Jesus in the silence, in prayer, in my brothers and sisters? Do I help others also who are seeking Jesus with a sincere heart? Or oh, I worsen the challenges of those sinners, those tax collectors, those people who are not good as I think as I am. The Lord teaches us to welcome everyone but his great mission is especially to the sinners, to the last, those who, consider, who are considered marginalized, forgotten. Because the Pharisees and scribes were looking at Jesus welcoming sinners and they're wondering how come this person wants to contaminate himself with the sinners? Why should he relate with such people? Maybe we do have such kind of negative attitude. We see somebody who is struggling in life and they say, why that person? We sometimes maybe judge others and we think we are more righteous than others. In one way or another, we are all sinners in need of God's mercy. And we should not despise others and still think like others are sinners. I am the best. Okay, if you think you are the best, thank God for that. And try to help others also to be the best. Don't despise them. Help them to be good. Because this was Jesus' mission. This is our mission. He welcomed them. Welcome others as they are and give them a chance, another chance, another chance to return to God, to be happy, to reconcile with God, with others and with themselves. Instead of pointing fingers as the scribes and Pharisees were doing, pointing fingers at Jesus, he's welcoming sinners. Why should he mix up with them? My brother, my sister, mix up with all people and let your mixing bring healing in the family, in the community, wherever you are. Mix up with all and let your, your mixing up bring healing. Welcome all and let your welcoming bring healing. The more we are with the Lord and we listen to his word, the more we will heal others as they come to us. We cannot give what we don't have. That's why we have to listen to the Spirit in our hearts, to read the Word of God, to listen to other encouraging messages around us. And filled with such goodness in us, we will be able to welcome others as they are. Pope Francis used to say that a church is not a museum for saints. 
a museum, something left aside and does not even touch the lives of others. It is a hospital for sinners. Hospitality is a place, the church, people of God, you and me, is a place where everyone comes and feels at home. Everyone comes to be healed, not only physically, but also spiritually, mentally, psychologically, morally, to be healed as a human person. Let us welcome, let us be hospitable, like a hospital that welcomes, that has doctors. Be a doctor to someone, be a nurse to someone, not because you are a professional and you have paper as a doctor. No. In your own way, even if you didn't go to school, you are invited to heal someone and to heal everyone. To welcome all, that's what it means to be hospitable, but also to heal with our words, with our actions, with our good attitude. Because many people, when just you welcome them, that's already a healing for them. When you abandon them, you reject others, that's already a pushing them away and killing them instead of healing them. Do I welcome others and heal them? Or I kill them by speaking bad words to others, creating bad words, bad actions to others, throwing stones at others, judging others, telling them that they are sinners and they are bad and I'm the best. Oh, I welcome them, especially those who are struggling with life as Jesus did. When I recognize that the church is a hospital for sinners, it means I am myself acknowledge that I need medicine to be healed, the spiritual medicine, also the physical medicine, material medicine, but especially that medicine of the soul. And as I need medicine to be healed that others are healing me, I also need to heal others. So it's a place where we heal others and others heal us with good news, with good words, with good actions. Therefore, we realize that each one of us can be a doctor, a nurse, can heal. And the medicine that Pope Francis is talking about, is, and that Jesus also shares with us, is a medicine of mercy. When we are merciful and compassionate to others, we heal others. When we are kind, loving, and filled with others and welcome them, we heal others holistically. When we are tender, kind, tender-hearted, sweet, kind to others, tender-hearted, hospitable, welcoming, close to others, especially those who are suffering, we are healing them. And we are joining that mission of healing all holistically. Be tender-hearted, be patient, be sympathetic and compassionate, feel with others, put yourself in the shoes of others, especially those who are suffering, and we will heal them just with our presence, with a kind word, with a kind action, extending a hand and trying to listen. There are many ways of healing people around us. Jesus shows how intimate and deep and immense his love is for all of us. And especially sinners, he welcomes them. He welcomes you and me. He eats with them. He dines with them. And eating is a sign of intimacy, of love, of closeness. Do we love all and welcome all as Jesus did? Do we welcome all, especially the sinners, and eat with them and dine with them as Jesus did? Have we ever tried eating and welcoming those who are notorious around us, those who are like criminals, those who hate us? Have we ever tried to eat with them, at least to be there with them? Those whom society rejects, those who are dirty, those who are poor, those who are not thinking like us. Have we ever tried to make efforts to get close to them and to dine with them, to welcome them, to be with them as Jesus did? Jesus, help us welcome all, even those who don't think like us, even those who hurt us, at least to even pray for them. And if possible, slowly by slowly, to begin dining with them, because that's when relationship is built and when we heal our divisions around the table, eating together, listening to each other, sharing what we have to eat, to feed our bodies, but also to feed our souls. Jesus teaches us the most effective way to welcome sinners is to dine with them, to eat with them. This we could call it Jesus' table ministry, whereby we see 
The table is the most perfect place to gain friends, to grow together, to grow in trust, in friendship with each other, where I'm not afraid to look at you in the eyes, to talk to you, to listen to you, to be close to you as Jesus is close to us, and to love you as you are, and to listen to your challenges and your joys. And this is the beautiful gift we can also find in today's Church, we have the table of God's word where Jesus feeds us with his word that nourishes our soul. So Jesus first feeds us with the material food and that gives us energy also to be more energized with the spiritual food at the mensa, at the table of the liturgy of the word, which also prepares us to receive his own body and blood, to eat of him, body, his body, and we become his body, we become his blood, to give us his life when we partake of his word and his body and blood, we have his life. And that life of his invites us also to go out, as he did, to heal others, welcome others, to eat with others, to listen to them, and to share the good news to all the people we meet. Jesus uses the table to bring his powerful message of reconciliation, of acceptance, and of forgiveness, and of belonging. When we are at the table, we are one as a family, as a community. And Jesus he brings these tax collectors and sinners and everyone together to say that, yes, you are my child, and my joy is not even one of us is lost. That's the joy of the Father, that not one is lost, but that all come to the knowledge and are saved. Like Jesus, as we journey together in life, and especially as we eat together, may our eating together and our journey together be a moment of belonging to each other, whereby nobody is excluded. May our eating together and journey together be a place, a moment where we trust each other, we attend to each other, we are intimate like the way Jesus is intimate to us in a good way. And as Jesus ate with his tax collectors and sinners, showing them mercy, forgiveness, and love and reconciliation, may we also welcome all and eat with them and show them the mercy of God, the compassion of, Lord, of the Lord, the love of the Lord who loves all as they are and re rejoices in the return of those who are lost back to the Lord and back to others and back to themselves. Jesus ate with sinners in order to give them a message that they belong to God and they belong to each other and how they should reconcile through sacrament of confession and reconciliation so as to enjoy belonging to a family of God and belonging to each other. We are sad and painful if we run away from God, from ourselves because of sin. And we are happy when we return to the Lord. It's not only God who is happy when we return to Him. We ourselves are happy and are peaceful, are harmonious, and I can do everything when I know I've confessed, I've reconciled, I'm at peace with God, with others, and with myself. And that's the best way that helps me to enjoy belonging to a family, to a community, to others. The Lord tells us that we belong to him and finding the lost sheep is Jesus' rescue mission and is our mission. The Lord rejoices when the lost returns to him through the sacrament of reconciliation. Return to the Lord, return to others, return to ourselves and the time to return is now before it is too late. Be at peace and enjoy living every life well. Even the difficulties will become light if we are at peace with God, with the sacrament of reconciliation, where we go and pour out everything to the Lord and allow His grace, His mercy, His blessings, His compassion to flow through us and reach others every second. The, no time to waste these graces. Let the moment to share these blessings be here and now in the family, in the community, wherever we are on the way, everywhere. Be like a shepherd who takes care of the sheep but also who rejoices in bringing back the lost sheep. And let that be a feast that we have when all the lost returns home. Blessings from Jerusalem, dear friends.